Hey guys, Morgan from Fabulous here. Today we're gonna to give you a full run through of how to install our 2020 Plus D-Max short entry. Let's get to it, eh? So here we've got laid out all our basic tools that you're gonna to need for the job. I'll give you a quick run through of what we use, why we use it, and what's gonna make your life easier for your install. We've got seven mil, eight mil hose clamp tool. Those make your life a lot easier when doing up all your hose clamps instead of trying to use a socket or a ratchet. Clip remover tool, couple of screwdrivers, flat blade and a Phillips. Um, nut cert gun, we tend to use the ratchet nut cert guns because it puts more purchase pressure on the nut cert, which makes sure it's not gonna spin in your pillar. Air hacksaw with a 32 tooth blade. This is what we choose to use because it'll give you a much finer cut and you can follow the template to the millimeter. Dremel, just with a flat wheel on it. That way you can clean up your cut and get rid of all your sharp edges and all your swore. Rivet gun, just basic hand squeeze will do. Um, and pretty much the rest of your tools, drill, screw gun, and a rattle gun. All that stuff there just makes your life easier. Just touching on these tools here too, if you don't have access to air tools, you can use a file to deburr. There are other options for cutting the guard, but we just find that this is the best way forward for um, getting the best result in the long run. A basic light will also help you to see everything under the guard and when you're cutting the inner guard hole. So when you're taping the guard, we always make sure we tape up from where we're gonna be measuring from. That way we're ensuring that we're not gonna get any scratches or marks when you're taking your measurements. When taping your guard too, just make sure you do cover as much area as possible because when you're finished with your cut, you're gonna be priming that cut and touching it up. So you don't wanna be getting overspray all over the car. Um, we also tape up the A-pillar as well so that when you're test fitting the snorkel, you don't scratch it. Next up, I'll take my measurements for the template. So for the D-Max, um, the first measurements will be taken from this top back corner of the quarter panel and the others will be taken pushed up against the bonnet making sure that the bonnet is closed when you take these measurements. 295. So first measurement I'll take for the back measurement and then I'll go to the front measurement. Once I've taken my measurements, I'll always double check too once I've marked them. And then you've just got your A-pillar measurement. This helps with making sure that you've put the snorkel in exactly where it needs to go every time. So we'll mark this bottom of bracket measurement. That measurement's also just taken off the back left corner of the quarter panel. Next, I'll then place your template up. Make sure it lines up with all the marks. Regardless of the template size, it always helps to have some magnets on hand just to help place it and make sure it doesn't move around while you're trying to mark it. Then you'll just take a pen. Um, generally we try to find, uh, we tend to find that Sharpies are the best for marking out your line. Once you've marked up your line around your template, you'll then cut inside the line. 
Next, we'll move on to disassembling the car. First, I'll start with the inner guard, pull all the inner guard out, bonnet up, airbox out, and then we'll get into the cutting. Um, so first, we're taking this out. I use a screwdriver, clip tool, 10 mil, just to pull all the screws out. Generally, you only need to do the first three quarters of the inner guard. So I generally start with from the top of the mud flap and go forward, because then we'll just pull it out and rest it down on the tire. Pop the inner guard out down onto the tyre, gives you plenty of access to the inner guard. Next we'll move on to removing this airbox. Right, first we'll start with removing the 12mm bolts. Um, there's three of them in the airbox. Helps if you have a long extension on an impact gun. Um, the clips for the airflow meter wiring tend to be pretty stubborn, so I tend to use a clip remover tool just to try wiggle them out of their clip holes. So once the airbox is removed, we'll come through, mark a line around our cup. Generally, it's the same size as the hole, but just moved forward and down slightly. Um, this allows us enough room for our intake pipe and the silicon to come through into the quarter panel. Once everything's removed, the intake's blocked off, we can then drill the hole to give us access for our air hacksaw, and then we can cut our template out. So first off, I'll use a nine and a half mil drill bit just to drill an access hole, but I'll also use a step drill bit in the back corner because it's a quite a tight radius. We find the step drill helps drill out that radius without giving us the risk of the blade jumping out. That way then, you've got your access hole plus it gets that radius perfect without having to try and make your blade go around the corner there. One thing to remember is your PPE as well. Um, it's all good to be playing around the shed, but when you get something in the eye or long-term deafness, probably not beneficial for your health. Once you're done cutting your hole, always make sure you pull your template out. You don't want that rattling around inside your guard. With the 2020 Plus D-Maxes and BT-50s, they have this uh, shielding. I don't know what, if it, what it is. I don't know if it's for sound dampening, but we have to remove that generally with the side of our flat wheel just to make sure we can get the pinch weld on there. So once we're done the cut, we'll then move on to test fitting the snorkel. Um, I'll fit the pinch weld, then I'll mark the pillar holes, see if there's any areas that I need to address on the cutout, um, pull it back off, prime, and then we're good to go. With the pinch weld too, it always helps to start with a clean cut. So I always tend to do a nice 90 degree cut at the start to make sure that my leading edge for the seam is really nice. When applying the pinch weld too, it is directional. Um, we tend to want the pinch weld with the lower section pointing out and it biting back into the quarter panel. So always test fit and see which way it sits nicer. If it's rolling in, just turn it around the other way and then it'll be sitting better.
With the overlap section, I'll tend to leave about eight mil overlap and then push up to it so it puts nice pressure on the seam, giving you that seamless look. So once you've test fitted, you'll look to see which sections are touching and where there's a slight gap. The sections that are touching, you might find that you have a mil or two gap in certain places. Um, with that, the sections that are touching, you can then take a mil or two away from that section to help roll it better into the sections that aren't touching. So the majority of this looks really good. I think there's just a tiny bit down the bottom I'd like to touch up and then it'll be perfect. I'll generally mark from the start to the finish of where I want to retrim. Um, you can also write millimeters as well as to how much you need to take off. Also, with trying to find out how it's sitting and where it's touching on top of just trying to look and visually see where your gaps are. You can also pivot the snorkel to see what's pushing in at the bottom and what's pushing out at the top. That'll give you a better indication of where you need to trim. Once you've identified any areas that you may need to retrim, you can then move on to marking your pillar holes. Generally, I'll open the door, put my hand in the end cap, Make sure it's sitting right at the mark where you want it for the bottom of bracket measurement. Mark the pillar holes. Just make sure too, with the 2020 D Maxes and the 2020 BTs, that you're only eight mil in from the outside of the pillar any further and you'll hit the double skin and you won't be able to get the nut set in. So then, line up with the bottom bracket measurement. Mark your pillar holes. Only eight mil in, maximum. That way you're not gonna hit that double skin and have any dramas. So I'll remove the pinch weld after we've identified the areas that we need to touch up. And then I'll retrim them. So after I've done my retrimming, I'll move to cutting in a guard hole. I'll just use the air hacksaw, cut this section out, give it a clean up, and that's good to start priming. Once you're done cutting too, I'll use compressed air just to blow everything out, any swarf that's lying around the car, just to make sure it doesn't rust stain. But we do highly recommend giving the car a proper wash after your install, just to get rid of any metal particles that may be sitting on the paintwork. Then we'll move on to priming the inner guard and the quarter panel. Um, we tend to use the Worth Zinc Rich Primer as we give it, it gives us the best result. We tend to use a piece of cardboard on the inside of the engine bay. Just when you're priming, it, it stops any of the overspray from going in and covering the engine bay with gray. So next we'll move on to drilling the pillar holes. What we've found is that Worth offer a step drill bit. This gives us the best chance of drilling the pillar holes without putting an outward stint in the pillar. These will be listed on our website, ready for purchase. They are literally the duck's nuts. You're not gonna have to change three drill bits just to drill one hole. Because it is a nine and a half mil hole, usually you'd have to step up to this size, but it has the steps inbuilt. That makes it the perfect tool for drilling the pillar holes and getting it right the first time without damaging your car. 
Right, so when I drill these pillar holes, I'll rest my arm against the pillar. I'll then push. Use medium to light pressure and high speed just to make sure you're not going to run a risk. Once I've done drilling that, I use a countersink bit just to knock the top edge off it and help the nut cert sit flush against the pillar. Some other brands we've noticed use wide flange nut certs and don't actually countersink the top. And what we've found is that leaves all the bracket to actually rest on the nut certs and not on the pillar. And what happens then over time, the movement of the snorkel, instead of it spreading the surface area against the pillar, it's just resting on the nut certs and it tends to actually rattle those nut certs loose. When you're clamping up your nut certs, just make sure that the face of your nut cert gun is flush against the pillar. Because you can run into issues if you tighten these up on the piss. Um, it'll pull the threads against the side of the nut cert and you won't be able to get the bolts in. Just apply them till there's a fairly firm amount of pressure and you know that the nut cert's not gonna move around. If you don't clamp, clamp these tight enough, um, when you go to do up the screws, it may actually spin the nut cert and then you're gonna be in a world of hurt. Once you're done cutting, priming, move all your tape. And then we'll move on to pinch welding the guard hole. All right, so because you've already cut your pinch weld, you won't have any dramas reapplying. Just make sure the direction's the right way so it's facing outwards and not rolling in. Then once you've pushed it up to it, make sure your seam's nice and flush. And then we'll move on to pinch welding the inner guard. So next up, before we reinstall the snorkel and all the silicons, we move on to modifying the factory airbox. So we found with these 2020 plus BT50s and D-Maxes that the factory intake snout is quite adequate at removing water as it enters the airbox. Um, it has the built-in evacuator valve and the pressure valve as well that operates while the engine's running, it'll suck that closed, so it's actually sealed while it's running. When it's not no longer operational, it'll let the water out. It also has the spinner that helps direct the water to not enter the airbox. So what we do, we'll remove the small spout, remove the foam, drill and rivet this section, because this section's already sealed, drill rivet and seal this section to make sure that everything we touch is fully sealed. The only other point of water ingress may be this seal around here, which is why we don't ever offer these as a fully sealed unit. And it's why we offer our fabricated air box as the only option to be fully sealed. We do stock and sell the 2020 plus BT50 and D-Max fabricated panel filter air boxes, and they take the standard panel filter. So for service, um, serviceability, you just rip the top off, replace the filter as per your factory airbox. So first off, we'll remove the foam. I'll drill all my rivet holes first. <coughs> so 
first off, I'll rivet that lower piece before I move the top one. The reason we rivet these is because they're only held on by quite delicate clips, with engine movement, it can actually work these clips loose. So we always rivet these to make sure you're not gonna have an issue with these popping out. Next, I'll get a flat blade or a, a clip remover tool just to get these clips open. Then we'll get our Sally's roof and gutter, just apply it around the outside. Pop your rivets in, rivet it up, and then wipe all the excess sealant off. Just make sure you keep a rag handy too. Then just wipe all your excess sealant off. Make sure to get it into where the clips are. And then just use a clean part of your rag, wipe off any major excess. And you're good for reinstallation. So next up, we'll move on to installing the three inch 90 that goes on the front of the airbox. We tend to use canola oil just to help with ease of fitting. We find that the silicons tend to be quite grippy. So when you're putting them on the airbox, it helps just to have that tiny bit of loop to get them on there easier. Once that's on there, I'll just tighten up my hose clamp firm but not fully tight until it's in the engine bay because you'll have to position all the orientations once it's in the engine bay. But for starters, with this three inch bend here, it helps having it positioned 90 degrees to the front of the airbox. Just to start off with, that gives you the best starting point for installation before you put it in the bay. Nathan and I tend to do this bit differently. I'll install the pipe and orientate it prior to going in the engine bay and then just adjust it. Whereas Nathan will put the pipe in after the airbox is back in the bay. This is realistically a preference thing and whichever's easiest for you to do so at home. Once you're done putting the pipe on and the silicon, you can then put the airbox back into the engine bay. Then line up your bolt holes. Start your bolts back. And then we we'll use a rattle gun to retighten these. We tend to leave the airbox lid off for this part just because it allows you much greater access to the intake pipe for orientating the hose clamps and the silicons. Once that section's done, the airbox is bolted back in. You'll then start by installing your joiner piece that goes through the inner guard section and out to the quarter panel, which will help join the snorkel. What we find for presetting these, we'll generally place the silicon halfway on, so leave probably about 40 mil, 50 mil of silicon hanging out the end, that way it gives you a good amount to go onto the snorkel and tighten up. Um, with this one, I'll generally leave this firm but still loose enough that I can position because once you get the snorkel in, your depth will adjust where the snorkel will sit. So if you find you can't get the snorkel far enough in, generally it means that this pipe or this piece of tube is too far out. 
um, and it'll be restricting your ability to get the snorkel into the guard. So leaving this loose allows you to push this in and position it how you need to, get those screws in the pillar, and then you can push this out as far as you can to make sure that it's fully sealed before tightening, tightening your hose clamps. Before applying this, I'll also spray some canola oil as well, just to help get it on there. On both ends. So once that's in position, you can then tighten up this hose clamp and go through and tighten the others as well once the orientation's correct. This is an also another personal preference thing. I tend to put all my hose clamps on fully loosened. Um, because I, f I find doing them up once they're on there and positioning them easier. Whereas Nathan will tend to undo the hose clamps completely and slide them on afterwards. Once the base section is done and all these hose clamps are tightened and positioned, we can then reinstall the air filter and lid and go through and tighten up all that and attach the airflow meter wiring. Um, you can make, just make sure you remove anything that you've used to block the inlet. We have seen people in the past put rags over these and forget and they've gone down and gotten sucked into the turbo. Oh. So that's all tight, that pipe's back on. Reinstall your clips for your wiring. Make sure that's plugged in and the engine base stuff's all done. So next up, throw the snorkel in the hole. Again, tiny bit of canola oil on the end just to help get it into the silicon. It also helps trying to get it through the tight guard hole. Make sure you have all your screws for your pillar ready to go so you're not gonna run into dramas there. But realistically, I just open the door. I'll throw this in, even leave it ajar. Throw this in, get it into the silicon and then I can screw the pillar holes, uh, pillar screws in and then do up the hose clamp. Once the pillar screws are tight, you can then move on to your final positioning. So I'll slide the hose clamp up to where it needs to go. Make sure the snorkel's into the silicon far enough. Tighten up the hose clamps prior. So before I fully tighten this hose clamp, with all of our snorkels, we tend to roll them down and put a downwards pressure on them just to help them sit in the cutout and flow with the car the way we want them to. Once you've tightened all the hose clamps, you can then go around and push up the pinch weld in any areas that might have a slight gap. This one's pretty much spot on. And then we'll just reinstall the inner guard, give the car one final blow down and clean it. And that's all done. Mm -hmm. 
Next up, all there is to do is to get out there, enjoy your fabulous snorkel, hit some water crossings, get out to the beach and enjoy what you put all your hard earned money into. So I hope this video has helped you guys in regards to fitting our kits, what they involve, the high quality products we use and all the tooling we use. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and stay tuned for more content. We'll have many more install videos coming up as well as some behind the scenes footage from around the shop. Thanks guys.